I'm Sir Tap Tap, and welcome to Velocity 2X. This is a sequel to Velocity Ultra. Um, let's just kick back right to the start here. This game, unsurprisingly, is a sequel to the original game. It's got a lot more story than the first game. Um, you can skip all the story if you don't want to watch it, so don't worry too much. Bye, Parker. Um, so yeah. This game does have spoilers for the end of the first game. Um, the first game's plot isn't very significant, but, uh, whatever. You remember things! The, um, the game originally puts you through some tutorials here, and, you know, um, I actually really like how the game does tutorials. It basically just has real levels that start out very basic, and you basically learn a couple of mechanics per level. Um, this one's completely brain dead simple because you know it's the very first level. Um, the way this game plays, a lot of people call it a shoot 'em up. It's like a shoot 'em up, but it plays more like a get to the end of the level as fast as you can game. Like it's kind of like a speedrun game, but it's I don't want you to you know hear that and get you know afraid and run away. As you might have noticed there, there was a 20 minute time limit on that level that I completed in. 48 seconds, or 38 seconds, excuse me. Um, you get extremely generous time limits on all levels, actually. Even the critical urgency ones. Um, one nice feature about this game, you can actually set it to skip levels, or skip um, cutscenes after you've seen them once before. I will be turning that on very soon. Um, partially not to spoil you, partially just because I've already seen them and don't really think it needs to be shown as part of the Let's Play. Um, I want to show you the gameplay more, that's what you buy this for. Um, the game has a big visual upgrade over Velocity Ultra, not that Velocity Ultra was ugly looking, but um, I really love the new style. Um, lots of nice lighting effects. Um, ouch. So there's teleporting in this game. I missed a survivor. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, you can go too fast. That is one interesting thing about the way this works. Um, the game is constantly scrolling forward, generally at a lethargic pace, but you can boost to, you know, speed up that scrolling. And since, you know, it's about going fast, you want to do that as much as possible to get as good, you know, score and time as possible. As you can see there, I didn't quite... Well, I got a perfect, but I didn't you know, rescue everyone. Um, oh right, I meant to s turn on skipping cutscenes. The game actually has great options. I will show you those after this level. So, the game can be played pretty much entirely in a state of flow where, you know, you just react to stuff. I really like that. To get optimal speed, you need to plan out your movements beforehand. You know, if you're gonna do a speed game, there's basically two parts the way you think of it. Um, there's routing and then there's execution. Um, what I like about this game is you can play it without knowing the route and you know just react on instinct. You're probably not gonna get perfect times and you know full rescues each you know the first time but it plays straight through like a normal game and I find that very enjoyable and then you can go in and you know get into the um, hardcore we're gonna you know optimize every level mindset. Um, so the options let you skip the viewed cutscenes, skip viewed tutorials. Lots of games don't do that, and it's very annoying. Um, you can disable L to move if you really want to use the D-pad. Um, invert your telepod throw if you're one of those inverted people. Um, one negative mark to this game, it's cross-save is not automatic. Oh, this game is cross-buy for PS4 and PS Vita. Um, it looks and plays great on Vita. Um, but the cross save, you have to manually upload to the cross save. It's pretty painless, see, but uh, it's not automatic. Uh, I really prefer automatic cross save. Um, it automatically attempts to download and, you know, gives you the option to download it or not. Um, it automatically prompts you, basically, but it does not automatically upload. And in my opinion, it should be the other way around, you know, like, if I want to play on my Vita, I probably am not able to get to my PS4, you know? But 
Like, uh, for instance, Doki Doki Universe and Fez do the cross save thing very perfectly. Um, and my favorite method is Hohokam, which is just completely 100% automatic. Um, like, in games like this where progress is entirely linear, I don't know why you would want an old save. It should just have, like, you know, a universal, like, clear save feature, but whatever. It's not a major point problem, but it's something you want to be aware of. Um, while I was gabbing, I forgot to mention, so biggest upgrade of this game versus Velocity Ultra are the platforming sections that I need to stop using that Teledash. That Teledash is faster than running, but it can get you killed in the wrong spots, which is why I shouldn't be using it like an idiot, but I am. Um, so, yeah, the platforming sections, as you might have noticed, you still get a pretty good sense of speed. I know a lot of people were worried, ow. Um, you don't have to Teledash through the whole thing. I'm being kind of stupid. But, uh... Yeah, the, the platforming sections absolutely maintain the sense of speed. Um, and they are integrated into the main game. I believe this is the first level that does so. They are integrated into the side-scrolling shooter part of the game. Oh, right. You have this, um, 360-degree arm cannon, which is pretty sweet. Um, and in addition to survivors, you have to collect these crystals in this game to get, you know, 100%. Um, an extra challenge to be fast is, you know, grab all these crystals. Crystals are only in the out-of-ship segment, you know, out-of-ship platformer segments. Um, survivors are only in the shoot-em-up in-ship segments. Um, if you've played uh, Mighty Switch Force, this game plays a lot like that at a meta level. It's very, you know, it's about going fast, but it's actually fast-paced, where Mighty Switch Force is actually fairly slow-paced, but it's just about optimizing movement. This game is much faster paced, and of course it has the top-down, you know, side scrolly shooterness to it. Okay, this part, this is the first one where you have the ship and the platforming segment. Um, I absolutely love the art style of this game. It's a big upgrade. Did I mention this? Whatever, I'll mention it again then. Um, just very good looking. I love the explosion effects are really great. They had a, a blog post, they had several blog posts on the visual design and uh, some on the gameplay design of this game. Um, but they really like their lens flares. Um, did I get that last survivor or not? But um, I think it all looks really good. Um, there is not. I was worried the Vita version would not look as good. It basically looks the same, but at a lower resolution. Pretty sure it's 60 frames per second. Um, to double check on that, pretty sure it does. Um, um, lost my train of thought. Yeah, I really love the look of it. Definitely an improvement over the first game. Um, Alright, this game, when it comes out, is going to immediately be in the um, Instant Games collection for uh, PS Plus. So if you have PlayStation Plus, which you should if you have a PlayStation console, honestly, um, this game is free to download. Um, not, I don't entirely understand that as a business decision, but hey, it's their money and their game, so they can do what they want. Um, is an absolutely great game. Um, I've already completed it. I got a review copy. I forgot to mention that. I got a review copy free of charge. Um, for all ethical disclosure, this I'll go ahead and say that. Um, yeah, I got a review copy a week or a month before official release. Um, I played the hell out of it. I wanted to do that before showing it off because you know it's a very technical game. So I want to. Embarrassing. I didn't want to embarrass myself like I just did. Um, you should not try to teledash constantly like I am in these segments the first time, because you will get yourself killed. It's not a really a big deal. Um, one thing I really like about this game is it's very accessible and not punishing. It's difficult, but... Um, Alright, so there's this difference between difficulty and punishing. Like, difficult and punishing. Like, um... The creator of Dark Souls was talking about how um, Bloodborne is going to be less punishing, but still difficult, and I think a lot of people have trouble with that. So, difficult just means it's hard to pull off. That's simple. Punishing is when, if you screw up, the game actually gets harder as a result. You know, it throws away some of your progress. That, to me, is punishing. Like, Gradius 3, 
punishing to a flaw. If you die, you lose your power-ups, and if you lose them at a critical time, you may as well just lose your entire credit right there, because certain bosses are extremely difficult to defeat with, you know, no options, no power-ups at all. Um, so that's one of the biggest flaws with Gradius 3, the, um, the console version anyway. The arcade version is completely full of flaws. Um, more on the difficulty side than the punishing side. It's just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, this game, um, very hard to optimize. It really delivers on the um, easy to try, difficult to master sort of thing. And most games that say that really don't mean it in my opinion. But this game really delivers. Um, the time limits are extremely generous. Um, like, you, there is no level that should take a sane person 30 minutes. There are a couple of levels that can be a bit mazy, um, and I do mean a couple, like uh, two levels um, out of 50, that you could get lost in, and if you're really, really bad, really, really confused, might take you 10 plus minutes. Um, for the most part, everything is, you know, under five minutes, generally under two or three. Very short, um, complex to optimize, and there's global leaderboards and all of that, you know, standard leaderboards, I think there's friend leaderboards and stuff. Um, I haven't been able to check out the friend features yet because I'm playing pre-release so no one else has it in my friends list, unfortunately. Um, pretty sure there's friend scoreboards. Yeah, I like how these, the platforming sections, um, they really challenge you to not go quite too fast. Um, to, you know, know where stuff is, but, um, once you know where everything is, then you can do, you know, your super ridiculous speed run. But yeah, back to the difficulty part. Um, so you can die in this game. Um, I've done it a couple times. You do not lose any points, any upgrades. Well, you might lose the temporary power-up, which is not necessary. Um... I haven't even been showing that off. I've, you know, this triple shot here is a temporary upgrade. Um, they're not very important at all, honestly. I'm not entirely sure why they exist. Um, they're a very slight improvement. Um, there are some platformer upgrades, I think, that are actually useful later on. I'm not sure we'll see those. Um, I'll show you something a little special here. But yeah, dying, the checkpoints are very frequent, you do not lose extra time, you just lose the time it takes to die and respawn. Respawns are almost instant. Um, so yeah, it's very not punishing, and I find that is a very good feature of a game like this. It keeps it accessible without making it easy. Um, I don't want the game to be easy, um, I want it to be not punishing, I want it to be, you know, accessible in a good way. So. Another, in addition to the platform levels, a big change from the first game is this game has boss fights. Um, Velocity was never a traditional shoot 'em up in that enemies are the primary source of difficulty. Um, in this game, you know, speed is the main sense of difficulty, um, and so it's routing and execution that are the difficult parts. And so the boss fights are a little change from the status quo. But the boss fights are still puzzles in their own right, too. Something a bit difficult about the boss fights, um, to do maximum damage, you should kind of um, flick upwards on the right stick while holding X. It's a bit... You can do it, I'm doing it right now. It's a little annoying. You can also use circle to throw bombs. I believe this in Velocity 1, the only way to throw bombs was circle. Turns out the, D -pat, or the uh, right stick is way better for that. Um, so Velocity Ultra was a big upgrade in terms of controls. This game is an even bigger one, um, particularly in the long-range teleport sections, which I'll show you off right now. Later boss fights get exponentially more complicated, like, it becomes more of a puzzle than a traditional boss fight. Um, dodging is mostly important to not waste time. Let's check out our long-form teleport. The long-form teleport levels were my least favorite in the first game. They have drastically improved on the formula. So what long form teleport is, is you drop off, well, let's wait for the actual point where we're supposed to do it. You press triangle to drop that little teleport thing there. Um, it will also tell you when you should drop off a telepod. Um, it'll have that little blue thing and the, you know, the little sound. 
Um, the, in the first game, the only way to use the telepods was to access this map and be all slow and lame and I'm using a map like a loser. But in this game, you can press R2, boop, right back. Or if you're using the PS Vita, you can double tap triangle because you don't have an R2. Um, the game controls impressively well on the PS Vita. In fact, it actually has one feature that the PS4 game really should have. Um, it lets you use the touchscreen to teleport instantly, you know, this short term teleport here. Um, which is something the original Velocity had on Vita too. Um, and it's actually really nice for certain levels. Um, not necessary by any means, but I really would appreciate if they could add that as um, in remote play. Um, it's kind of weird that it doesn't. So remote play lets you customize how the Vita is used. So like, um, what's it called? Child of Light has um, in normal PS4 controls the touchpad. Ouch! Touchpad acts as a cursor, like a half-assed mouse. It's not very pleasant to use. Um, but if you play it on Vita. Um, you can touch items directly, you know, you have this one-to-one -one direct interaction like you're using an iPhone because, you know, you have a real touch screen. Um, and if you're using remote play on PS4, you get the best of both worlds because you can play on the PS4 and you can touch directly, like, it's just like the Wii U gamepad, basically. You can touch something on the gamepad to activate it directly. Um, I really wish the remote play on this game did that, but it doesn't. Um, so my main gripes with the game, honestly, are um, that aren't gameplay related, um, are that the the, P the Vita integration could be a bit better. The cross buy is amazing. The actual game plays on Vita perfectly, but it doesn't make the best use of cross save or remote play. Um, this is something they probably could patch in post launch. Um, I'm not sure if they plan to or whatever, um, but it would be really cool if they did because I really do like. I do like having that um, touch to teleport, and I was actually missing that. Um, I played the majority of the original trip, the original um, Velocity Ultra on a plane ride from Vegas, which is about three hours, and I beat the majority of the game in that. Um, not sure if it was the majority, but it was a pretty sizable bit. So um, I got pretty used to the touch controls. And then I couldn't use them in remote play, um, so that was a bit of a downer. But the upgraded visuals on PS4 are a very nice touch. Oh, also, anytime you want, you can teleport right back to any of these um, docks, which you know, the platforming sections. So that's pretty helpful in case you forgot to place a telepod, or just you need to go back to one of those and didn't think you would need to. So it's a pretty nice feature. Um, I forgot to mention the whole point of this level are these telepods. Um, uh, we'll get to use one soon enough. Yeah, so you throw, you hold triangle and you throw them, and then you double tap triangle to teleport over to the most recently thrown one. And there are later um, ones where you'll need to drop one, like I just did on accident. You drop one, you know, return to an earlier point. Um, they get pretty cool with the level design for these. Um, my biggest problem with the ugh, gameplay is throwing the telepods isn't always absolutely perfect. Like, it would be nice if it snapped to pos correct positions, but not like in too cheap of a way. Like, um, I just waste, you know, maybe a second or so fiddling with the R stick to get, you know, the aim just right. It doesn't sound like much, but it can cost you a best time. Um, it just doesn't feel perfectly accurate, because you know you're using a stick to aim it. Oh, one great feature of this game, um, another improvement from Ultra, if you shoot a, um, there are those, you know those numbered security locks I've been shooting? You have to shoot them in order, but in the first game, if you shot lock 3 after shooting lock 1, instead of shooting lock 2, all of them were to reset if you shot them out of order. Um, this was really frustrating because sometimes it was pretty easy to, you know, if you're firing blind, you could accidentally hit one and reset all the locks and basically ruin your run through. Um, that is no longer possible to do on accident. Or it, that's no longer possible to do at all. They do not reset. You know, if you hit a higher level one, it doesn't.
do anything. Um, that is a really nice improvement. Um, so this game is a straight improvement on Velocity um, Ultra in basically every single way. Um, also, you'll notice um, there are multiple environments in this game. The original game did not have multiple environments. It made it look a little cheap. Um, the multiple environments don't really do much. You know, the game, the gameplay naturally evolves as you go on and gets goes from simple to very complex by the end. Um, I'm showing you um, these are pretty much moderate complexity levels. It does get way more complex than this. This is one of those segment segments where you might waste you know a full second or more trying to throw that telepod. Uh, that's what I'm not a fan of. Um, but yeah, the multiple... Uh, what was I saying? The multiple environments really help the game look good, and um, there's a full story now. Not super complicated or anything, but the art for the, um, for the story segments, fantastic. I, I love the art style in the game, and I'm really glad they had you know, a good way to express that in the story. And if you don't care about the story, you can skip it. So, best of both worlds. Also, when you're, you have this circle shot, I haven't been using it. Um, I usually prefer to use the uh, 360 degree arm cannon here. But uh, it's actually very powerful and very useful. Um, certain enemies you basically need to use it against because I think it's stronger. That is a section. Anytime you see these angled things, you're supposed to use one of those telepods. Um, the game does a great job of letting you play in a sense of flow and, you know, just continue on, you know, reacting, acting completely by, um, instinct. You know, to get the best times, you're gonna uh, want to replay the level a couple of times. Um, I actually got gold on maybe a third to half of the levels the first time, but of course I played the original game, so I know what I'm doing here, um, for the most part. But, uh, yes. So as you can see, I haven't got all of, uh, I guess I should explain the scoring system too. Um, so every level has these four things, well, three to four things that are ranked, you're ranked on. There's time and points every time, pretty completely self-explanatory. Um, there's also rescues and crystals. Rescues are those little yellow things, I, or not yellow blue capsule things that I've been rescuing in the top-down shoot 'em up sections. Crystals are the purple crystals I've been collecting in the platformer sections. Um, to complete all of the levels perfectly, you need to get you know below a certain time, above a certain score, 100% of rescues and crystals. Not necessarily in the same playthrough, which is important to know. And you can also get a perfect, which adds that extra little emblem. That's if you beat the game with or the level without dying. Um, I'm not sure if there are other qualifications on there, but there's also experience you get by doing all of these, um, you know, completing all of these goals, and levels are unlocked as you go um, by the experience. You do not need to complete every level in sequential order. Um, it obviously pays off to play like that because, you know, it explains, you know, the game escalates naturally. So there's few occasions where you'd want to skip a level. Um, certain complicated, what are those, the green ones? Um, certain, anything with a long time limit, you might want to skip. Let's show off a pretty cool one, though. Um, but yeah, if you don't like a level, you can freaking skip it. Especially if you've done well on previous levels. I actually skipped two levels before beating the game. Um, I really didn't like them. They were more telepod levels. Um, they weren't as bad as I thought. They had a pretty high, um, time limit, which discouraged me. Um, it wasn't entirely necessary to take that long, but uh, like if the game gives you 40 minutes to play, it probably takes less than 10. Um, like I said, game not very punishing, very forgiving, it's forgiving. Um, this is one of those more complicated levels, but it's also one of my favorites, which is not something I expect, but it's very bullet helly. Um, like, there's lots of enemies, like, bullets to dodge, but, uh, bullets don't actually do very much damage to you. Oh, right, um, new gameplay mechanic you haven't seen yet. These jerks, you have to teleport through them to disrupt their shields. Pretty cool. 
So yeah, there's lots of things that shoot lots of bullets, which is why it's called Bullet Blizzard. Um, and that's why it's one of my favorites, too, because there's lots of... I just like lots of showy bullets, even if they're not, you know, probably gonna actually hit you. It just feels badass when there's lots of bullets. That's the whole point behind, you know, Dan Maku bullet hell stuff. And this is one of... This is one of those levels where you um, need to set a telepod to, you know, go back through the level. Um, it's usually pretty obvious. Actually, it tells you specifically when you're going to need to use a um, telepod. So do not worry about missing, you know, leaving a telepod. It should basically be instinct after you get used to the um, warning. See, I really love the pacing of this game is just great. It, um, never really breaks you out of flow, except uh, if you're really searching for how to get through um, certain segments with these complex locks. Ouch. So, as you can see, um, I've never really lost more than a second or two due to dying. The game's checkpoints are really, really well done. That's not where you're supposed to throw that. See, the. Those segments with the part, you know, the little thing on the wall where you're supposed to reflect it off of. Ow. Probably my least favorite part of the game, honestly. Um, it's really, it's not too bad. It's just um, anything that slows you down in this game is frustrating. And that's why it's really amazing that there isn't much that slows you down. Um, for the most part, it's just you and your own skill. There are just this, these very few moments where um, you need to fine-tune where you throw a telepod. That's really about all there is to it. And you know normal telepod throws, the basic ones, like I just did the last throw I did there. Um, you know, you can do pretty much entirely on instinct. Uh, should go without saying, I'm playing the PS4 version. Um, ouch. Those boost things, um, well, they, they speed you up and you should be aware of that. I should have slowed my roll there. You can control how fast the screen scrolls. You can press the R1 button to either dash in these um, side scrolling sections or ouch. Um, speed up the screen scroll in the normal segments. You know, screen um, the uh, the shoot 'em up segments. And so, if you really wanted to, you could walk through all of the platformer sections. Um, there are only a few jumps you need. Why am I bad at video games? Um, um, you can pretty much walk through the entire game and leisurely stroll through all the shoot 'em up segments and still have time. This, oops, <laughs> embarrassing mistake to make. Um, this is not the optimal way to play it, the game, of course. It's completely doable. And I'm functioning mostly on instinct, and I'm still managing to capture... Oh well, time improvement too. Almost all of the stuff. Um, so this game plays very good on instinct. Um, as I said before, free on PS Plus. Not sure why they did that, but you really need to take advantage of that and get this game right now, in my opinion. Um, it's 15, I think it's, is it 10 or 15? Actually, I'm not sure if they announced pricing. I have no idea what it costs. The, the price for non-PS Plus members will be in the description and an annotation if I remember. Um, whatever it is, is worth it. Especially if it's like $15 or under, I highly recommend getting this game, whether you have Plus or not. But if you, have, if you don't have Plus and you have the ability to play this game, which is PS4 and PS Vita only, at least for now. Not sure if um, Velocity Ultra game to PC, not sure what the deal is with this game, but if you got a PS4 or a PS Vita, you need to check this out right now. One of my favorite games of this year, honestly. Um, I am not on the leaderboards anymore, unfortunately. And in when we were in the review, Wario 64 likes this apparently. I'm 55, so not too bad considering um, I played the hell out of this the first week, and then I got busy. Um, so I've got all these ugly silvers and bronzes that I need to fix up, but I will get that platinum, I assure you. Um, rambling here. This is Velocity Ultra, or Velocity 2X, not Ultra. 
Um, I highly recommend you check it out. Very good game. I'm Sir Tap Tap. Thank you for watching.